Good evening and welcome to the St. Louis Zoo. It's great to see such a large crowd coming out for a hot topic on a cold night. Boo. <laughs> but um, we do know that this has been in the news recently and our speaker, Dr. Carl Bender, who's been here before on this topic, has really done a great job in the past translating the science to a level that everybody can understand. The St. Louis Zoo co-hosts the science seminar series with the Academy of Science, and we have two other programs later this year. Uh, the end of February, there's an interesting program that, oh, maybe 150 miles away or so, there's the largest fossilized rainforest that has been discovered over on the Illinois-Indiana border near Danville, Illinois. And two of the members of the uh, Illinois State Geological Survey is going to come and talk about what this area was like maybe, oh, 180 million years ago. So we invite you back for that. And then this is in the zoo world and many other conservation organizations are also hopping on board, the Year of the Frog. And our last program on April 2nd is featuring uh, John Chase, who's been doing research on amphibian decline for many years. He's a director out at Tyson Research Center. So he's coming here to speak about hopping the gauntlet, and it's looking at amphibian decline. And then I also want to mention that on Leap Day this year, February 29th, here in the living world, we're going to be opening uh, an awesome amphibian exhibit that's going to be in the Ecology Hall, and that will also talk about the amphibian crisis, some of the problems they're facing, and give you a chance to meet salamanders this big, <laughs> as well as other frogs. There will be a program also here in the living world on March 4th. You can find out more about that program on amphibian decline by going to the zoo's website. So I'd like to turn it over to Mary Burke, the Executive Director of the Academy of Science. Thanks, Jim. Um, a, a quick bit, because there's so many new faces here tonight and a couple of wonderful faces that we have here often. Um, the Academy of Science is 152 years old this year, as a matter of fact, this month. And our whole reason for being is to foster the understanding and appreciation of science. And the biggest way we do this is to connect those brilliant, wonderful scientific and engineering minds with the rest of us. So um, we're very thrilled to be co-sponsoring this series. We have a lot of other series and programs and seminars that we do pro throughout the year. We send scientists into the classroom. Um, just about everything we do is totally free because we have wonderful donors who make sure that these programs keep going. Um, on at, at each one of the ends uh, here, I dropped off a clipboard with a sign-up sheet. If you have not signed up before, I encourage you to put down your name and your address or your email address. Every month we'll send out an email blast with all the things that are coming up, and I think you'll enjoy that. So if you have, if you have one of those, just go ahead and sign on and pass it on back, and um, we'll make sure that you don't miss out on any of the other science things that we have going on. Um, because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions, we'll speed through this real quick so we can get to the, um, the meat of the night. Um, but we're thrilled to have Dr. Carl Bender with us. Um, he is a distinguished professor of physics at Washington University. He's received a Guggenheim Fellowship. He just returned from a year at Los Alamos. Um, he has uh, written probably the, the most important uh, book on advanced mathematical methods for scientists and engineers. He is a man of amazing talents and breadth, and we're very pleased to have him with us. Please welcome Dr. Carl Bender. You know, thanks very much for coming. It's very nice to be here. Um, so my talk is going to be on the greenhouse uh, effect. Um, 
this is what Woody Allen uh, basically had to say about it. Uh, more than any time in history, mankind stands at a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness, the other to total extinction. <laughs> Let us pray we have the wisdom to choose correctly. Um, what's the problem? Uh, the problem is very simple, that we, all of us, uh, consume energy. And just to get you on the right wavelength, um, the units of energy, the standard physics unit of energy is the joule. Uh, the unit of power is the watt. And a watt is something that you see all the time, every time you look at a light bulb or a toaster. Um, a watt power means how fast you're using energy. Uh, so what you should remember is one watt let me see if this works. So one watt is one joule per second. One joule per second. So a 75 watt light bulb is burning 75 joules of energy every second. Okay? So one form of energy, and the, that's the kind of energy we're going to be talking about tonight, is heat energy. And the unit of heat energy is the calorie. So they're really two units of energy that phys physicists use. One of them is the joule, the other one is the calorie, and they're related in a very simple way. One calorie, one unit of heat energy, is actually 4.2 joules. Now, you are all familiar with another energy unit, which is the calorie. And this is a little confusing. So there's the physics calorie, which is lowercase c, and the food calorie, which is a capital C. And it's a little confusing, but one food calorie is 1,000 physics calories. OK? Now, just to give you a feeling of amounts of energy, if you can throw a baseball at 60 miles an hour, that means you've given a lot of energy to that baseball. How much energy? Well, roughly speaking, a baseball traveling at 60 miles per hour has about 200 joules of energy. And that is the equivalent of about a 20th of a food calorie. That's all. So if you're trying to lose weight, it's really hard work to lose weight by